Okay. Okay. Is there an echo now? No, I think we're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's, let's okay, does that work better? It, a thousand times better. A thousand times okay. better. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not anyone's fault. It's just technology in the age of COVID-19. <laughs> so anyway, how are you doing? I'm doing, doing great. Today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Just, uh, you know, makes me feel like I don't actually know how to do my job. <laughs> I can't even get on Facebook Live, but. Especially since we're the millennials and, you know, working online for seven months now. <laughs> you think we can right? yeah. Facebook Live. Absolutely. Well, I just feel like Facebook is constantly updating and making new changes. And it's like, if you knew how to Facebook Live last week, now it's like different. So then it's just like, you have to try to keep up with everything all the time. So. A hundred percent. Okay. So let's get started. Um, so for you awesome. all that don't know um, what we're doing today, this is a K-State Culturally series that is sponsored by uh, the K-State Alumni Association. And today we have Georgina and myself, and we are two K-State young alumni, and that's kind of the topic today. We're, we're young alumni, and we want, we're just going to um, discuss the difficulties or not difficulties and the things that it's like to be a young alumni, especially um, specific to, you know, K-State. Um, young alum. But what makes Georgina yeah. so special is that she created a young alumni group chat. Um, so if you're a young alumni, we're going to talk a lot about it later. But she created this group chat that has been great for, you know, young alumni like myself with connecting with one another who's moving, you know, moving to different cities and different things. Um, and just connecting us, uh, connecting Wildcats across the world. Um, so can you just introduce yourself, Georgina, for those who didn't get the pleasure to meet you? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Georgina Clemens. If you came to K-State, you might know me as Georgina Rubio, but, you know, got married and in between um, after graduating and, and now. So um, I sometimes feel bad because I'm like, hi, do you know me? And they don't recognize my <laughs> name at first. But yes, Georgina Clemens, formerly Georgina Rubio. So um, I currently work at the Kansas State University Foundation as a digital development officer. So I'm full on K-State purple all the time. <laughs> Nice. Um, so a little bit about myself. My name is Michael Leverett. Um, I graduated in 2019 with a degree in social sciences and a minor in ethnic studies. Um, currently, I am unemployed um, because I was going to the Peace Corps. I had agreed to go to the Peace Corps in September of 2020. So I would have actually been there now. Um, but we have been postponed to September of 2021. So going wow. to go to the Peace Corps next year. Yeah, so a lot has happened um, since graduation. And now I actually, you know, was working as an academic advisor um, for a little bit. Okay. Um, getting me ready um, for my, that was my first professional job. And then my second, I guess, would have been uh, being a Peace Corps volunteer. So with that, can you, I guess, mm -hmm. to get this conversation started, um, Georgina, can you talk a little bit about, like, your professional or personal journey post um, grad, like your first job or your first experience yeah. is what it was like, the experiences, uh, the emotions that you may have been feeling, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I failed to mention, so I graduated K-State in May of 2017 um, with a degree in marketing and a minor in public relations. And um, I particularly focus in international business while I was at K-State. So I got an international business um, certificate. And so when it came time to look for a job, um, I was like thinking about what I wanted to do. I had a mentor who told me, and I was wanted to go into marketing. I had a mentor who told me that if you ever wanted to make it big in marketing, you always had to start in sales, which I kind of dreaded. I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm a yeah. salesperson, but um, I think that we don't see a lot of like the great side of sales a lot of times, but I ended up taking a job with Seeds Robinson. Um, they're a global logistics firm and they're originally based out of Minneapolis, but they have a regional office in Kansas City. So I ended up accepting a job with them as a um, carrier sales representative. So essentially what I did was I negotiated the rates in which we moved freight from like point A to point B and making sure that freight got there um, exactly how it was supposed to and while also making sure we still maintained a um, revenue margin. So um, it was a, a lot of problem solving. <laughs> it was a lot of crazy stories. Mm -hmm. um, 
and definitely very competitive. Um, so that's kind of the first job I had. And it was in Overland Park. Well, it was technically in Kansas City, but I lived in Overland Park, which is a little bit why, like, you know, being connected to young alumni was really important to me because I come from small towns. Um, I grew up in Emporia, Kansas, and Mm -hmm. I actually finished out high school in Nebraska. So both like small towns, I had never had really lived in anything bigger than, you know, um, 50,000 people. So Mm -hmm. being in Kansas City was like, oh my gosh, like this is nerve wracking, but also exciting. Um, And I was there for about two years. And after that, I had the opportunity to come back to Manhattan. And that's when I took the position here at the foundation. So thank you for sharing that. Can you um, talk a little bit about um, like the emotions behind um, starting your first job? Because for me, um, I started as an academic advisor and it was a little bit I started in March. Uh, I graduated in December. Uh, I got mm-hmm. accepted to the Peace Corps in January. So mm-hmm. the timeline was kind of like all over the place. Um, and this job seemed a little bit unexpected. Um, and we're going to talk about the power of networking later. But networking is really how I got this job. Um, I had somebody reach out to me. It's like, hey, we're hiring. And it was just a previous um, network that I cultivated over the years of being in college. And they thought about me um, once I graduated and they had this position open. Um, so I was extremely fortunate um, to have that. But the emotions that I was having, you know, oftentimes like going to your first job, it's that feeling of kind of creating a new normal. Because for me, like leaving college, you gotta create a new routine. You gotta yeah. find new things you like, new friends, new mm-hmm. everything. So can you talk about like that experience for you? Like, how, was it rough? Was it emotional was it rigorous yeah absolutely so I found it a little bit tough because like I said I never really lived in a big city and a lot of my friends who were moving to Kansas City were living in a completely different part of town than I was living in and so it was really hard to like like you no longer saw your friends every day like you would in college so that was like a huge um, very eye-opening I guess and just being like and or even like working 40 hours a week like no one tells you how exhausting that is like in college so like tired. you come home after class and you can take like a nap and then you can go out mm-hmm. to go more class or to do other activities but working 40 hours a week was physically exhausting and then having to deal with like rush hour traffic and then on top of that still being like oh gosh I have to drive all the way across town for dinner with friends like it was a lot and I think a lot of people don't tell you that or mm-hmm. tell you like oh man like yeah you're actually going to be dead tired after working all week for 40 hours and so yeah. um I found that a little bit difficult because while I did want to see people I did want to hang out I felt like I didn't none of my friends lived near enough that I was like oh man like I'm not I don't want to drive all the way downtown you know right. like it was very exhausting and so um, I, I found it hard to be connected to people. And I felt like in the area that I lived was very, there's a lot of families. So Mm -hmm. there weren't a lot of like single people that I knew or younger people that I knew that I was like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to go hang out with them. So, and I don't know if it was my lack of like trying to go look for people, but (laughs) just kind of having that experience and then coming back to Manhattan I kind of got like reconnected with K-State, obviously, like working through the foundation. And it made me realize how disconnected I had gotten that first year after graduation because I was worried about getting a new car, finding a place to live, learning a new job. Like, you know, all those big grown up things like having to pay all the bills that you may not have had beforehand. And um, I think that especially when you come from a background where that's not the same path that your parents took. And so they can't Mm -hmm. really like help you give you good advice on how to navigate that, it can be kind of difficult. So when I got back to Manhattan, I was like, yes, K-State, everything. And I realized, well, what happens to all the people who leave K-State? How do they get connected back to K-State? Even in the time that I was in Kansas City, I think I came to like one football game, maybe two. And even then, like, I was like, oh, I kind of forgot about K-State for like that first full year that I had graduated. Um, So... I was like, okay, and even working here, I think that's kind of what sparked the idea of Young Alum was that it's like, 
how do people, how do people find other people, you know, like Mm -hmm. there's all these things that people talk about, like, oh, there's Bumble BFF and there's all these things. And I'm like, (laughs) but I want to talk to people who like, I feel like I have at least one thing in common with. And I think we can all say that us being K-Staters connects us in a really cool way. So Mm -hmm. um, I kind of use those, those feelings that I had of like, I don't have no idea where to even start to ask someone for this. That's kind of what sparked the idea to, I was like, let's set up a Facebook group where we can connect and like have the questions that I had when I was trying to navigate a new city, a new job, a new everything. I was like, and why don't we just like have a place for us to be able to talk to other people about it? And that's so, and I think that's so powerful about like, the young alum group that you created it's because a lot of us especially um us non-traditional or students of color like we our parents a lot of us are like first generation i'm not a first mm-hmm. generation but a lot of my peers are first generation students so there's mm-hmm. that disconnect when talking to you know parents uh with like hey well even with college but even after that it's like yes hey, so what do i do now and even talking with my mom um, it's just a lot of stuff that's just different from the jobs that we're being hired for, mm-hmm. um, from like the type of jobs or like how, how mm-hmm. many different jobs we have to look for or have to work. Um, and yeah. so that's why I think the al- young alum group is so important is because we can talk to each other and help like what worked for you, what worked, you know, and, and apply things um, that may work for us or for me. Yeah, And absolutely. that's why I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, when, and just like another thing that comes to mind is like, you know, both of my parents worked full time while they were going in college and they would go to night school and that's how they finished their degree. So like they never had not mm-hmm. even close to the same experience that I had. Right. So by the time they graduated college, like they were already working, like they knew what it was to work full time on top of going to night school and all these things. And so, like, sometimes I feel like my parents are like, why, you're tired? Like, you're having a hard time navigating this? Like, they just, like, didn't get it. And so I was like, okay, I need someone to turn to, like, who can understand, like, what I'm going through right now. So we talked about, like, the hardships of, like, that first uh, year getting into, you know, the professional field. Can you talk about um, some of the tools that you use to, like, overcome that? And I, I mean, for me, I use, I had to learn hard boundaries. Cause like you said, like, especially in the age of COVID, um, it seems like a 40 hour work week turns to a 60, 80 hour work week. So it's like, we're working what feels like harder at home. Um, mm-hmm. So how did you like discover that, that balance for yourself? So, like for me, it was hard, ba- like hard boundaries, uh, coming home tired and having to realize like, hey, okay, take an hour to debrief and like eat lunch around or eat dinner away from technology or alone and have time to think through your thoughts, uh, reach out to friends and let them know um, like what's going on and kind of having that communication of people who expect things from me in my relationships. Mm-hmm. So that kind of worked like that transparency because letting people know that you are kind of a different person uh, because your life mm-hmm. looks different. Um, college, you know, like you said before, like you, you know, your your times aren't as hard. You know, you don't have to work yes. eight hours every day. It's a lot more flexible in how, mm-hmm. you know. And I just think for me, it was just asking people to be lenient with me as I figure out this new um, task and also depending on certain people to lean on them from I'm so tired or if I may need, you know, a person to talk to after a day of work or whatever. So can you share some tips yeah. that kind of help you get through the mud or get through the hard days yeah and something about to, i'm about to share is something i'm still kind of working through but um i think when we're all in college and especially if you hang out with the same i think that it's pretty safe to say that a lot of us hang out with similar people to us so when you're in college mm-hmm. we're all kind of on the same level right So when we graduate, all of a sudden, we're all kind of thrown into different levels of life. Some of us are getting married. Some of us are having kids. Some of us are having our dream job. Some of us aren't quite there yet. And so something that Mm -hmm. I think about often is inspiration versus comparison. 
I find myself comparing myself to peers that I graduated with or friends that I graduated with. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're already doing their dream job. And I'm still like entry level or wow, they're doing all these things. And I haven't done that yet. Or it just, we start to compare our life stage with everyone else. And I think that sometimes like making sure that we take a step back and realizing like, okay, we all have different paths. And while we may have had the same degree, the same professors, the same experiences in college, that doesn't mean that our lives are going to be the exact same. So um, finding the inspiration versus the comparison. So being inspired by people and being like, okay, I want to get there. What do I do to get there? Um, I want to take the steps to make sure I get where I'm going. I want to make sure I'm focused, but not being like, feeling the feeling of being compared or feeling yourself comparing yourself to others. So I would say that's the biggest one. And I still struggle with it Mm -hmm. too. Sometimes even, you know, doing a job that I love, I'm still like, but I could be doing this. And like, I think of all these grand things that I could be doing and I'm like, but so-and-so is doing this. So um, having this, this young alumni group has been so great because I've seen already people asking on there, hey, I'm interested in kind of going this direction. Do you guys have any tips or have any resources or have any podcasts or anything like that that would help, you know, hone these skills or help me get me in the right direction? And I love seeing that because I think that really does, um, really emphasizes that it's inspirational. It's inspiring people to get better and versus it being like, oh, look what I'm doing and be jealous of me type of thing. Right. So... That's really, really good advice. Um, like I, because that's, I think that's something that I was thinking about too, but didn't necessarily have the words um, to do it or struggling with. Um, and I think a lot of my friends are too. Um, and I think you really put it together very succinctly and and perfectly. Uh, inspiration versus comparison, because um, a lot of us can, especially now in the age of COVID, when things look very different for the mass majority of us. Um, mm-hmm. I would definitely say the young alumni serve as a huge inspiration for me and a lot of other people seeing how, seeing, just seeing us and seeing your peers um, travel and work and just spread out across the world and reach back for help mm-hmm. or for yeah. you know, to lean back on each other. So I think that says a lot, honestly, about like you and the K-State spirit and the K-State um, alums. So can you talk about mm-hmm. what, being a young K-State alum means to you, especially, I feel like this is the perfect segue um, because I feel like this is very unique. Being a K-State alum is very unique. Uh, Having our own sets of inspirations and our own sets of things that like our own K-State experience in itself really makes us like, makes us, like I said before, unique and strong in our own way. So can you share um, what being a young alum looks like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, being a K-State alum is so great because I think, not trying to be biased or anything, but I think we're the <laughs> friendliest alum group. Um, and also because it's there, I feel like we're one of the most loyal, dedicated alums that there are. And so that's already awesome in itself. But I think what's even more cool about being a young alum, a K-State young alum, is that we're seeing K-State go through changes that perhaps other groups have not seen in the past. Um, I think K-State is moving in a direction that that has been inspired by us requesting and asking for a change and asking, hey, like, we need to move forward with, uh, you know, certain things. And, and so as the young alum group, I think that we have so much power in our voice and have so much power in that connect, like, being connected and things like that. So to me, it's really important that we continue having that voice and we continue feeling connected to K-State because there's, if, if we don't do that, there's going to get to a point where we're going to be so disconnected. There's going to be such a huge gap because, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, I don't know which way, whichever way you think yeah. about it, life keeps going. Mm-hmm. And at some point, the generation before us is going to be gone. And then we're going to be the the generation that follows. And if we haven't been involved from the beginning, then it's going to be so much harder to connect us back when there's a huge gap. So for me, I think it's really important because we're kind of the group that is going to continue pushing and, and really being the, the innovators of change to helping push K-State in the direction that we want it to go. So I think that we have a very important 
role um, that that we play in, in this. So I would agree, especially just, you know, after the conversation before about talking about how unique uh, K-State is, I feel like I, it's, it's a sense that I owe um, the university or all the people that's coming after us because of the amount of people that have poured into me and thinking about like those 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 unique experiences that make us wildcats, um, those unique people that you know see you walking down and actually do you need help, mm-hmm. like your first day of school or like your first day touring campus and you have three people, hey, you look lost, can yeah. I help you? Can I show you where this building is? Can I offer this? Can I offer some type of assistance? Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure like you can go down the list of people at K-State who have poured into you and made sure that um, the night she was hungry, you had food. Have a scholarship that somebody can help you find you a scholarship. Um, just that amount of generosity and that love and that family uh, feeling that we have at K-State, it's almost a feeling that like I'm responsible to give that to the next, as an alum, um, as a K-State alum. I feel like I'm responsible to help curating that feeling of love and that feeling of family so that there's another student that can feel feel what I felt when I walked on that campus. I think we lost her. We're going to try to get her back. Sorry, guys. I think we haven't looked. There we go. There she is. Okay, it looks like I got disconnected there for a sec. Welcome back. Let's see here. Can you see me? Mm-hmm. I can. Perfect. You, I think we're, I think we're all good. Awesome. Sorry about that. I just said reconnecting, and then it, I went away, so I, didn't, I was like trying to connect back. So it's not the worst thing that happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So yeah, can you? Um. We talked about networking at the beginning. Um, can we can you talk about um, the power of networking and how it has, you know, continued to show up in your life professionally and, and personally? Yeah, absolutely. I truly believe in networking in every aspect, um, whether it's socially or whether it's professionally or whether it's just personally. Um, I've had such success with networking. I think like one of the biggest things that stands out to me about a networking um and networking experience I had was um, my junior year of college at K-State, I was frantically applying to every internship known to man. Mm-hmm. And I kept getting interviews, but I was not getting them. And I just felt very discouraged. And um, I, at the time, was participating in a marketing team competition um, with the College of Agriculture. And Uh, We had gone to a networking event where I just was talking to different people. I knew that they worked some, they did something in ag and it's something marketing and something public relations, but I didn't know exactly what their roles were. And I was just talking to them about different things um, related to, to the industry and to marketing and public relations and things of that nature. Didn't think much of it. And one of the ladies was like, oh, like, um, you know, we actually already closed our internship in our internship pool um, applications and things like that. So you might just have to wait till next summer to apply. And I was kind of bummed out, but I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, whatever. And I kept applying to other internships. And um, after that, um, that networking event, a few weeks later was when we were having our competition. And that year it happened to be in Kansas City. So um, we were in Kansas City and we were about to compete. And that lady actually emailed me and said, Hey, so after talking to you, like, I've just been thinking about it. And I, I think I'm, I'm thinking about opening an an internship just for you because you really impressed me during our conversation a few weeks ago. And I said, okay, that's so awesome. We're about to compete in 30 minutes. Do you think you can make it downtown to come watch us? And she and her um, partner made it. And within five minutes after I got off the stage from competing, I had an internship offer in my sitting in my email inbox. So I, that was, I didn't even apply for it. I wasn't something that I saw after, but it was just a conversation I had with a professional in a networking setting. And she decided to have an internship just for me. And it was an awesome internship I had at an ad agency in Kansas city, um, primarily working on an animal pharmaceutical account, which was really awesome and cool. So 
that was just like one of my many experiences I had, but that one sticks out the most because I remember I, I would stay up late every night, like trying to fill out in, internship mm-hmm. applications. A lot of them were project based. So trying to like finish projects for them to show them like my skills and things like that. And so to be able to, to have just one networking opportunity turned into internship was really, really cool. And so um, I always think about that. And also I, with my current position at the foundation, I have the opportunity to talk to a lot of donors and a lot of successful people. And the number one thing, a lot of the times when I am on the phone with them, I ask them like, okay, like what's one thing if you could tell students, you know, what would it be? And they always tell me that networking is key. A a lot of them have said that they owe their success to K-State connections and Mm -hmm. to being able to um, keep keep good relationships with those. Um, you know, as we talk about like the power of K-State alum, um, back in my senior year at K-State, my career coach told me, I was told her that I one day wanted to work for Nike. And she said, well, have you talked to anyone at Nike? And I was like, what? No, like, how am I going to do that? And then she was like, there's so many K-Staters that work there. So that's when I learned to use LinkedIn appropriately, which means that Mm -hmm. I actually like now will look to see like, you know, if I'm looking at different companies or brands, it tells you how many alum work there. And K-Staters are so nice. I've reached out to plenty of K-Staters where I've been like, hey, I'm interested in this. Can you tell me a little bit more? I'm a K-Stater and they always reply to me. I've always had K-Staters be extremely, yes. And I know that if that were happened to me, if someone were to message me and say like, hey, I'm a K-Stater, I would love to know a little bit more about what you do or anything like that. I would in an instant be like, of course, like Mm -hmm. it's just that connection, you know, like if you're walking down the airport wearing a power cat and someone yells across emo (laughs) or go, go cats or anything like that, you instantly feel connected. You instantly feel good. It's all the purple feels. So Mm -hmm. I think networking is extremely important. What do you think? Yeah. uh, Networking to me has, is something that has played a role in, I guess, all of my career, like my success throughout my life. Um, Network is something that hasn't really stopped. Um, Mm -hmm. That's how I got to K-State. So I was was a transfer student from a community college back home in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And I was involved in student government at my previous institution. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to a student government conference that is actually hosted by Dr. Bosco. And Mm -hmm. At the time, had no idea. Honestly, I had no idea what K State was or where it was, or even it was nowhere on my radar. But um, I've gone to the conference twice and meeting Dr. Bosco and talking to him, and he like sat down and have a conversation with me and was just like, "I think you would be a great fit. I think you would be a great fit at K State." And so through that networking and through that opportunity, um, I came to K State, and ever since it hasn't stopped. From little small opportunities of like traveling and people see me. Um, like as a tourist and they're like oh wait you go to K-State and offering up their homes um, for like dinner or like a place to live Mm -hmm. um, support you know anything of like from traveling for football games and you run into um, K-State alum or like you said LinkedIn um, having any questions about anything and I think this K-State culturally series is so perfect because it kind of shows the, 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 the wide range of alum mm-hmm. that we have and that we're able to, to draw from, from having, you know, live shows help, help us with food or wine to hair to uh, young alums. To, it shows the diversity in which, um, you know, K-State serves its students and how it cultivates those students to where we are adaptable and we can fit in no matter um, where we go. And so this is what I was saying about K-State being a unique place and being such a, um, a place full of love um, that fosters humans like you and I so that way we can yeah. network and go to these different places and fit in. And so I think that's, that's why I think the progression and like us being young K-State alum and taking that role serious um, and cultivating the next group of K-State alum because it seems like the alums before us really took that legacy serious Mm -hmm. and continue to cultivate and create great K-Staters. So with that being said, it seems like we've been going for a good 20, 30. Yeah, hold on. I got to turn the lights back on here. They're like motion activated and I currently (laughs) didn't move enough. (laughs) No, it's perfect. 
Um, I feel like we covered a lot. Do you have any anything, um, any last words or advice for, or, oh, wait, 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 sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. How can people join the Young Alumni group chat on Facebook, the group on Facebook? Yeah, absolutely. So if you just search K-State Young Alumni, it should go ahead and pull up and you just have to answer a few questions. Um, I think some of those include just your favorite K-State memory, the year that you graduated, and if you agree to the rules. Um, because we want to make sure that it's inclusive to everyone, um, we try to stray away from from things that would um, – I don't know, promote hate or anything like that. We stay away from all of that. This is like a community where we want to make sure it's a safe space for everyone and that we all feel comfortable with each other. And obviously it's a trust thing to whatever is talked about in there. Hopefully it's not being shared out to the world if, if people don't want it to. Um, mm -hmm. So they can go on Facebook and usually I try to accept people's requests as fast as possible. And if I'm not, feel free to send me a message. Um, I think on the day that I started it, I was getting like 200 requests at a time. So I was a little bit delayed on that. Um, but now it's a little bit slow, but it's so exciting to have seen it grown. And I think there's only over um, 4,600 members already. And I receive a request at least every day. So it's always, I get so excited every time I see a request come through. So, um, I think like, working at the foundation. I think that we can get caught up in, in our own things and not really realize um, that, you know, we're probably, we're not talking to people. more um what's missing like what what connection you know why is the connection weak if there if the connection is weak or I'd love to see what kind of content we can bring to you guys that would be helpful to you guys. Um, sister. He has a lot of resources. I'd love to know, you know, feedback, any comments, concerns, anything that you guys that we can do to improve I'm all can the, you hear me yeah the okay, cool. connections got a little, little weird um well with that being said thank you so much the young alumni group is such an, a fantastic place to be I remember when it first started and how like you said active it was and my friends was telling me about it and everybody was so, 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 so excited about it. And so I love the energy. And like I said before, like we would love to have more young alums. So if you don't know about it, please join us. Uh, we're excited to see you and meet you. Um, but with that being said, thank you for joining Georgina and I for K-State Culturally today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. We're able to take um, some things away and see us next time. I think October 4th is the next um, K-State Culturally. So just Stay uh, by your phones and get ready for the next, the next one. Thank you, guys, and stay safe. See you later, Georgina. Thank you. Bye.